Hello, everyone. Hey, how are you guys? So welcome to SDC. I hope you guys are uh, enjoying it so far. So uh, this session is all about Samsung Pass, which is our biometric authentication platform. And uh, in order to prepare for this session, I actually spent a lot of time. And uh, I was doing a lot of research, reading white papers, and studying myself. And there was one website that I found uh, particularly helpful. And it was about speaking in the after lunch slot. You know, it's like how to bring you guys back from the graveyard when your tummies are full and minds are drifting. But I think Stanley actually did the job. <laughs> so he was here and everyone was awake. So I think I got that, that uh, taken care of. But then what's not really particularly helping me here uh, with, the, uh, speak, with the speech is that the topic is security. You know, public key infrastructure, secure hash algorithm. You know, I hope you're not already going like this. <laughs> but no, this is not what I'm going to be speaking about today. This year, as this is all about IoT, intelligence, and connected services between them. So it's about how Bixby makes payment, how payments are enabled across multiple things, both in real and virtual context. So from Samsung Pass perspective, this becomes a question of identity. It's about how do you identify and authenticate yourself across multiple things in connected services that are provisioned through the uh, Internet of Things. I won't claim that Samsung Pass is the answer, but uh, this is the core question that I want to explore with you today uh, throughout this session. So with that in mind, let me just jump right in and uh, begin by introducing myself. So uh, my name is Song Su, and I obviously work for a company called Samsung. And my birthday, if anyone's interested, is January 20th, so it's 0120. And I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, there's a striking similarity between my name and the company name. So you could even put them together and say Samsung Su 0120. And nowadays, I even put a special character next to it, so it's Samsung Su 0120 Sharp. And I'm sure that you're wondering where I'm going with this. But these are actually variations of passwords that I've been using for the past 10 years or so. So they have evolved as the password policies have evolved. So now I'm always confused as to which password goes to which website, you know? Uh, so there's definitely that problem of convenience. But this is not the worst of all problems, because you can easily look me up on my Facebook page or on my LinkedIn profile to find the relevant information to derive my passwords. So there's that problem of security as well. So how do you solve for these problems of convenience and security? Well, that's where Samsung Pass comes in. Samsung Pass replaces passwords with a simple eye scan. So let me show you how it's done. Uh, I don't think I'm getting the audio. Research Laboratory. When high security is required, verify your identity with a simple glance. Personal security. Medical prescription. Send your personal information safely and conveniently. Simple identification, ticketing. Skip the lines and get to the fun faster. Only you, from just you. You are your password. A uh, bit of glitch there, but uh, so what is Samsung Pass? So Samsung Pass basically is a biometric authentication platform that leverages sensors on our phones and also hardware and software components such as a Knox platform to integrate with partner applications to provide biometric authentication experience. So, so far, we've been working with major US financial institutions to integrate with their mobile banking applications and payment applications. And we're continuously working with technology partners to expand biometric modalities that we support. We started with uh, uh, iris recognition and fingerprint recognition. We expanded to uh, include face recognition. 
And also, we worked with multiple partners to enable electronic signature as additional modality on our latest Note devices. And we're also working with uh, multiple authentication platform providers to continue to explore different use cases. And so, so far, we've been very, uh, it's been a really exciting journey for us working with different companies to explore how biometrics can enhance mobile experience with various applications. But along the journey, we also faced a lot of challenges in terms of uh, taking the mobile experience with biometrics to the next level. So let me share with you some of the challenges that we've faced and also uh, think through with you uh, how we could uh, potentially overcome those challenges. So the first challenge is uh, uh, with identity. So if you think about biometric authentication done today, you're basically comparing the biometric template that's stored on the phone versus biometric scan done by the user. So you get the match, no match result, but you never really get any information about the user. So when you think about it, you're never really able to tell who's sitting behind the phone trying to access the service. But what if you could tie identity information to biometrics? So it's not just any biometrics, but verified biometric. Your smartphone could actually become a hub that can bridge your digital identity with your physical identity. And by tying everything to biometrics, you can make the overall experience of identifying, identifying yourself on mobile phone a lot easier on the smartphone. But this also introduces another challenge, because now you're trying to bridge over to a realm where you handle personal identity information. So the second challenge is regarding the security and privacy of handling the information. And as some of you may know, there was a recent breach with a major financial service provider. And the service provider was vulnerable to an attack because it kept millions of valuable personal identity records centrally stored on the server. So it was basically incentivizing hackers to attack and steal the data from them. So it's very important that we uh, think about how and where we store the personal identity data and how to transact the data so that we can identify the user who's using the phone. And the next challenge is with IoT. As you can see, uh, soon we're going to have millions of devices that you need to interact with, and also that uh, devices that need to interact with each other, basically. I mean, if you just look around, there are TVs, cars, uh, refrigerators. All these things need to interact with you. And it's important that you maintain a consistent identity across all these different devices to optimize your service experience. And also, there's another challenge related to this, which is uh, user experience. So some of these devices have new ways of interacting with users, and we need to catch up with all these different technologies in order to provide authentication and identification experience uh, that's uh, aligned with the new form factors and new services that are coming out. So let me share with you a short video clip about one of the challenges that uh, authentication uh, experience may face when providing it through uh, uh, artificial intelligence. And I have to mind you that this was very professionally filmed. Uh, it was done actually a night before uh, I flew out here. So <laughs> enjoy the clip. You should never ignore messages from your wife. <laughs> Text Jenny. 
Wanna go out tonight? Bigsby, remind me to check the lottery results when I get home. Hi, Bixby. Show me my messages from my wife. Okay. Go. So he's working, he doesn't have to look around. He just needs to say things he wants to have done. So if you're doing artificial, inter uh, artificial intelligence and doing a voice interaction, there are apps that require stronger authentication than just voice interaction. So in those cases, you have to fall, uh, you have to fall back to passwords, which, makes, which ruins the user experience. So you need to figure out what sort of authentication and identification method you're going to provide so that you can optimize the voice interaction as well. So, so far I've mentioned four different challenges in terms of uh, uh, identity and authentication management. So the first one was with the identity of a person, the physical identity, and the second was with security and privacy, third one was IoT, and the last one, uh, user experience. So let's try to do some connected thinking to solve these challenges. At Samsung, we actually have a lot of technology components that could potentially address these problems. So let's try to connect the dots and how different technologies can be connected together to solve this problem. So if you think about it from identity perspective, we have this thing called SIM card on every single phone. And when you provision SIM card, basically when you activate mobile account, you have to go through a, a carrier retail store and go through a physical identity verification process to uh, activate the phone number. So the carriers do have and maintain Active, uh, active records of verified identity. And there are various companies that are working with carriers to make that data available for identif identification on mobile phones. And also on all the phones, we have a camera which can take a high resolution photo of passports and the driver's license. And there are technologies today that can verify various security elements that are embedded on these ID cards to verify authenticity of the document. And from a privacy and security perspective, our phones are equipped with uh, Trust Zone and Knox technology, which provides secure local storage. So once you verify identity of a person through different methods, you can actually store the verified identity data locally on the phone and manage it on the phone so that you, are, you can address privacy, both privacy and security issues. And also, we can add on top of that technologies like FIDO to provide extra layer of security. And from an IoT perspective, we have NFC and Bluetooth that can connect with multiple devices. And also, we have Samsung Cloud that can store not sensitive personal identity information, but data that can enhance convenience, such as settings or preference information. And from a user experience, we're continuously investing in coming up with new biometric sensors. So we have iris and fingerprint, and there will be more that's uh, going to come up. And by combining all these different components, we can actually address all of the four challenges that we uh, mentioned now. And in Korea, actually, we have 
combine the solutions to address some of the challenges. And let me just go back to the artificial intelligence uh, example and show you how we uh, try to overcome the user experience challenge. Hi, Bixby. Uri Yuning as Oma Ege, Chamon, Sonnen Hep Chuan. So you're interacting through the voice, and when you combine voice interaction with iris recognition, you're actually speaking to it, and you get authenticated as you're speaking to the phone, and you don't, have, you don't even have to lift up your hand. You're just looking at the screen, and you get authenticated right away. So combining iris recognition and AI makes a seamless user experience to do the strong form of authentication uh, combined with the application usage through voice interaction. So this is a live service right now in Korea. We've actually done a four-way integration between Bixby, Samsung Pay, Samsung Pass, and also uh, with the uh, mobile banking application. So this is just one example of how we can combine, different, combine and connect different technologies to address the challenges we're facing. And we can even take a step further and think of a hypothetical solution. We're calling it trusted ID. And we can actually have verified identity information and have the verification results securely stored locally on the phone. So on the one hand, we'll have verification partners who work with carriers, who work on the document verification, ID card verification technologies. And through the partnership, we can implement the methods to verify a person's identity who owns the phone. And once the person's identified, we can store the verified results locally on the phone and tie that with biometrics so that when a person does biometric authentication with the user consent, we release the verification result as well as verified personal data. And the service providers can actually take that data and then use that for, uh, let's say, signing up for a new service or identifying the user for multiple purposes. So I mean, if you think about use case example, one use case example that could be really interesting is the, actually an instant credit card provisioning. So you verify a user's identity, and then you provide the user, you leverage you verified user data to apply instantly on a mobile phone for a credit card. And once the service provider, the credit card issuer, processes the information and uh, approves the uh, application, then we can actually get, uh, get the credit card instantly provisioned on the phone. And if you take it even a step further, you could actually put that onto Samsung Pay so that you can use it instantly. So end to end, everything starts and ends on the mobile phone. So um, you apply for a credit card on the mobile phone, and then you get issued, issued to it, and then you use it instantly. Everything's instant, everything's done on the mobile. So that's how we can package and design a new user experience by leveraging some of the technologies that we talked about. But then in order to um, pursue this uh, vision, it's important that we create an ecosystem around the partners who needs to supply various different technologies, uh, for instance, on the verification front. And also, we need to work with service providers to design and really think about how we can innovate uh, and uh, prepare uh, new services in the new realm. So this is the vision that we have for uh, Samsung Pass. And I really wanted to share this with you today so that we can really think about uh, and come together to think about how we can innovate and design the next generation services. So uh, I'm going to close with a somewhat, with a demo and with a somewhat uh, corny remark. So this is a demo that uh, we built with uh, one of our partners. So as you can see, it's a door and it's connected with my smartphone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do authentication on the smartphone and it's gonna open up the door and the message, I think you might, get, you might have guessed, but it's like, connect with us to do connected thinking. And so we can unlock the door together to our future. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys.